Hi, I'm Dominique from Body Mind Fitness and I want to chat with you today about the weight recommendations that I have for you for your home workouts. So this is going to apply whether you are new to working out or whether you've been working out for a while because two things. Weights can take up a lot of space, especially as your home workouts grow and you get stronger, you're going to continuously be adding more and more. And then also, they are quite pricey. So this is going to be a win-win situation for both of those things. These recommendations are going to take you much further in your practice than sticking with you know, the typical smaller dumbbells that we're going to be talking about, which I will explain more on this later. That's why I have it here. So the first recommendation I have, and this is whether you have been working out for a while or whether you are brand new to working out, is some sort of stretchy band. So I have a TheraBand here. Um, it's flat. It's got a lot of stretch to it. This is, I think, a medium one. Um, there's also the tube ones with the handles on the end as well, and those work very well as well. I tend to keep these around the studio much more because they are much more beneficial for the core and pelvic health classes especially because we use them for a variety of things and ways that the tubing doesn't work so well with. So with these, you can bring your hands closer together and make it harder, or you can bring your hands apart and make it easier. And you can do a full body workout with just this TheraBand. So if you're newer, this is going to be a great place to start. And they're pretty inexpensive, and they don't take up a whole lot of space, right? So you can do biceps, you can do triceps, you can do some squat techniques, deadlifts, rows. There are all kinds of things that you can do simply with this TheraBand here. The second recommendation I have are dumbbells. And I do like the idea of having two dumbbells. Maybe it's just my brain processing the fact that I like a set, but this is another reason why I like two. So these are 12 and a half pound dumbbells. I have two of them. And you can use one and do 12 and a half pounds, or you can use two and you have 25 pounds. So arms might be a little bit less, but then you can do squats, deadlifts, and rows, all kinds of things with two of them in your hand. So this makes them a little bit more versatile because you can double your weight simply by adding another dumbbell. Now, when it comes to selecting your weight for the dumbbell, let's take a look at what the average lifting that you're doing in your life is. If you are a new mom with a baby in a car seat, that car seat with that baby is quite a bit of weight. So having a two pound dumbbell or even a five pound dumbbell, you might end up selling yourself short or burning through those lighter dumbbells much quicker than you think. And because it's what we have at home, we tend to hesitate adding more weight because of the fact that, well, they're not readily accessible. So we want to kind of milk that for as much as we can. Totally understandable. If you already have some of those lighter weights at home, so these are three pound weights, one of the ways that you can extend the life on them for smaller muscles like your biceps, shoulders, triceps, is to hold two in one hand and do one arm at a time. So I just cross them and I hold them this works much better with lighter weights. Once you get into the heavier weights, it's not so easy to do. But if this is what you have at home right now, this is just one way to, again, extend the life on your weights. And I'll give you a few more pointers once I get to our last weight selection that I'm recommending. So the last thing I have is a kettlebell. And I like to make this on the heavier side. Kettlebell movements, um, I really do a lot of squats with them. I do a lot of deadlifts, dead rows. But I wouldn't necessarily go out and buy a 25 pound kettlebell because I have 25 pounds worth of weights here. Okay? So you want this dumbbell or this kettlebell, part of me, to be a different weight, and I recommend a slightly higher weight than what you would be using the dumb or what you have in total for the dumbbells. So I have 25 pounds worth of weight here, and this is a 30 pound kettlebell. Right now, I think I have a different one at home, but it's all about kind of playing. If you have the ability to lift them up and see them, it can feel kind of scary. But again, look at what you're doing in your everyday life. Those moments where you don't want to go back to your car multiple times, so you carry all of the groceries in the house at the same time. That's an example of a lot of weight, especially if you got some heavier products in there that you are doing with, you know, a little bit of difficulty, but 
it happens on a pretty regular basis. And at the end of the day, when we are doing any kind of weight training, we are trying to elicit a change. So we are trying to create something different in our bodies. And in most cases, it's strength. So if you're lifting or lighter, pardon me, than stuff you do in a regular basis at home, you're not going to be getting that change as quickly as possible. Now, once those weights start to feel a little bit lighter, whether you're going with my recommendations or you're doing what you have at home, some ways to extend the life on those weights are, again, holding two weights in one hand, like I showed with the lighter ones. Again, not so possible with these bigger ones, um, but definitely possible with the lighter ones. Another way is to slow down your repetitions, and I encourage you counting them out. So oftentimes we're just flying through our repetitions when realistically you could go up for four, three, two, one, and then down for four, three, two, one. And trust me when I say that this is going to feel much, much harder than those quick repetitions. Another thing that you can do is hold in the strongest part of the position. So I've been showing my arms a lot because I've got this really small screen right now. But you could hold at the top for maybe a count or two and then bring it back down. Or in the case of the bicep curl, somewhere around 90 degrees in terms of your bent elbow is gonna be the strongest part of the movement. So holding here for a couple of seconds and letting go. And again, you can play around and just try it out in your own body, see what feels hard, and go for a feeling rather than simply going through the motions and not really feeling what you're meant to be feeling. So I hope this was super, super helpful for you today. And if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below. But again, stretchy band, even if you've been working out for a while, this is great for some smaller muscle groups. That is something I did not mention. Um, like shoulders, and even if you want to just kind of go a little bit lighter on your weights on particular days. A couple of dumbbells um, that are, again, a little bit heavier. So I said these are 12 and a half pounds, even eights, tens um, is somewhere where I would start, even if you're relatively new to exercise. Worst thing that happens is you do six repetitions instead of eight or six instead of 12 and you gradually build yourself up to those 12 and then a heavier kettlebell. So usually I go between 30 and 40 pounds when I recommend these for my clients. So again, questions, comments, concerns, I would love to hear them. I don't think there's any concerns, <laughs> but I hope this proved helpful for you today and I look forward to chatting with you again very, very soon. Bye for now.